Okay, um, what I've just done is I've soldered some copper ends to the bow. Um, what you would call these points, um, I don't really know. I'm just going to call them the uh, pads, I suppose, for a better name, um, on the ends of the bow. Now, on the instructions which came with the... Uh, 1944 uh, Practical Mechanics um, um, article. It said to use plastic and rivet two pieces of plastic on. Basically when you put the string on, as I've now done, they uh, pad the area and create a better seat for the string to sit on, as you can see there. I'm probably also going to take a file or a small grinding tool to the steel just here and try and put a nicer curve to the metal there so that the, the string sits nicer so it doesn't have that little nasty bite point there. Um, but basically I've soldered these two copper ends on using uh, the blowtorch down there or here I should say I didn't take it too much uh, too high a heat uh, I've used uh, borax flux and uh, some some um, solder you can basically use plumber's solder and uh, the string has arrived that I ordered on eBay. The string is a 26 and a half inch, uh, sorry, 26 and a half inch um, crossbow string uh, um, with a 185 or 180 uh, pound pull on it max. Now I suspect that it's made out of. Um, I can't think of the, the name of the uh, the stuff right now. Um, do, do, um, it tells you in the article how to make a bowstring, but you can get these, and they're not that expensive. Um, I think this was probably about ten or twelve pound. This this uh, bowstring. Yeah. So that's that done. Um, now I've been working out a release mechanism now sort of slightly based on an original one but my um, version of it I'm doing a few little changes in how it's made on, uh, re on original ones uh, they tended to use a round piece of steel um, similar to, let's have a look, got, uh, got a piece of uh, steel here. Basically they'd use a round piece of steel like this and then they'd cut a slot in the top of it up here, uh, sort of like that shape and they cut another little indent at the bottom. So basically the idea was when the um, when the bow is caught in the slot up at the top here there's a little indent down at the bottom here where the trigger mechanism would latch into and the idea is uh, the slot's fairly big and when you bring the bowstring back you actually push this round um, release mechanism backwards by pushing the string into it and when you push that back so on um, pushing on say that point there the um, that part rises up yeah and the trigger mechanism latches in to the other piece down at the bottom so effectively that's what I'm doing here but what I'm going to do is rather than using a piece of steel like this this by the by by the way is drawn to full size it's drawn around the timber 
of my gun, uh, of the crossbar I should say, not the gun. You see, I could, um, I could sit that up on there and use that for a, uh, a mechanism if I wanted to. You never know, I still may, I may change my mind, yes. Quite often do on jobs like this. Um, but what I'm intending at the moment is I'm going to cut these pieces out of flat bar. Um, some scraps of steel I have uh, lying around like this. So I'm going to cut these shapes out of flat bar. Uh, that's uh, an early scribble, which is not good. So, um, yeah, so basically what I'm doing is I'm going to laminate three pieces of flat bar together. So the two outer ones are going to be this shape. And then the inner one is going to have this shape down here coming out from it. You'll see it better when I've actually made it. And I'm also probably going to make the trigger out of the same um, type, uh, pieces of flat bar. It's about one centimetre thick, this flat bar. I use it for quite a number of things. I've used it for Thompson um, machine gun trigger mechanisms as well. It's very sturdy. It doesn't fail. Um, right, the stock. Stock's over here. And um, it's coming out quite nicely, I would say. Uh, put a little filler in those holes at the back there. It's sawdust and PVA glue. Uh, how it look when there's some stain in the wood, I'm not sure. Hopefully a, a, a lot better than it does at the moment. Um, yeah, I reckon that's looking fairly reasonable. I can get my hand around that quite easily and the trigger mechanism should come through approximately there and the lock on the top um, yeah so obviously this will be the other way around if you know what I mean uh, but I'll draw it like so yeah yeah so you can get the idea the barrel sit there I haven't decided a hundred percent how I'm going to attach it to the front of the bow yet there's some very easy ways of doing it, but I want it to look um, slightly more uh, old-fashioned in, in the way it's done. So I'll be thinking about that a bit. Yeah, so um, things are um, starting to take shape. I'm going to start cutting the lock mechanism now, I think, or release mechanism. Right, so that's the mechanism, and I've just sawn these three components out of some flat bar, one inch wide by one centimetre thick. So basically you can see now three-dimensionally how this looks. And I've drilled a six millimetre hole through it and put an M6 bolt through for the time being. But I suspect when I finish this, I'm actually going to have a 8mm hole drilled through them. I'll re-drill it when I finish with the 6mm. I just feel that potentially this crossbow could be quite powerful. And I don't want um, all that power to be pulling purely against the 6mm bolt. So I'm going to be using something 8 millimeters. I think that'll be a little bit more uh, decent. So basically what we have here is if you were to look down the um, crossbow, you'd be through the, well not sights, but uh, basically looking, looking down from, from the rear you would see this gap here. Now that gap is where your crossbow bolt will be sitting and the string will be uh, held back by that, by, by the two, uh, by the notch there, you know. 
So as this rotates over, that notch travels down and releases. And then this point here comes up. Now when you go to cock it again, you pull the um, string back and the string pushes on this piece here as you cock it and rotates it back over and then latches and, and then you release your string back and it locks against there and of course as you lock the string into its position it locks because it's latched by the trigger mechanism down there below of course when you pull that trigger mechanism back with a spring or something or other either located behind here or a spring pushing that way under there yeah so uh, you can see uh, how it how it works that flies over string comes back cocks it again and so on now this is just made out of three components uh, obviously they're not joined together yet so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to potentially I could just clamp this in the vise as it is now with that bolt through the center and then get an angle grinder and I could grind uh, the, the points where they join uh, deeper and wider you know I could make a groove in these points here and then I can weld them up then I can flip it over and then inside that point there I can weld it on its two sides I can also put the grinder down in again and get in, in there again but um, there's no real particular issue here I can uh, just weld that area up so uh, that's quite easy to do so that's what I'm going to be getting on with next um, I've been drawing the area on the stock here where I need to uh, cut the wood out now this happens to be um, the release mechanism going in where I've got some existing holes in the timber now that hole it's going to be staying in the timber but it's going to be hidden by the outer release um, plate which will hold uh, which will hide these these holes in the timber so there's no real issue there uh, yeah now in the top I've uh, marked off the area where I'm going to have to chisel some wood out so it's going to be chiseled out, uh, drilled and chiseled and the shape I don't need to, to chisel it any more out for that piece for that for the um, for the release any more than than that area there for the main outer or, or, or high components then um, the central piece will need a slot which is only one centimetre wide in the middle which goes deeper so that way I can reduce the amount of wood which I'm removing from the stock and therefore keep strength in the stock uh, only remove the minimal amount of wood that I need to remove uh, Hopefully that makes some sense. Anyway, I'm going to get on with this now um, and I'll come back to you shortly. Not too bad. Just need cleaning up with the grinder now. But before I, well, yeah, I'll clean them up with the grinder.
Well, this is just a cutting disc. Really, I should change it, but uh, I'll, I'll get I'll, it'll work. Let's see how this works out. You can see what I've done there, I've actually filled the join between all three points up by welding it so it looks like it's one chunk of steel now, effectively it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some grinding on this and filing. and uh, it should look like one solid piece of metal I've made it out of and machined it. Okay so that's how it's turned out I think it looks fairly reasonable uh, you can see uh, just in the edges of the claws we call it I've rounded the corners off um, there's an obvious reason for doing that it's basically to reduce the amount of wear on the bowstring uh, if you round those those edges off it's not going to dig into them quite so much uh, yeah so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it uh, I'm going to uh, blue it like I would do with gun components I'm going to um, hot dip it in uh, engine oil and it'll make it look uh, all a nice black colour I think that'll look quite good um, you know I could still do a little bit more filing here and there but you know it's it's not looking too bad considering uh, it's just three chunks of three separate chunks of metal welded together and ground back yeah, so uh, we're getting there, aren't we? You can see if I uh, look at that. There's my component. So uh, I'm going to need to work out uh, the uh, the trigger next, and I'm going to do a trigger with um, a bit of an old-fashioned look to it. It's either going to have um, the trigger curled around maybe with a little hole in the bottom forwards or as I've seen some actually curling backwards but um, curling backwards seems a little bit stupid to me you may as well curl it forwards and that gives you uh, something for your finger to, to grip on doesn't it anyway uh, we're getting there
Right, so there's the uh, release component. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's looking fairly good. Now it's uh, being oil blued. Now, I've cut this recess out in the stock. As I showed earlier, that was the general shape I was going for. And um, I think that's mostly what I've achieved. Now it's got that extra recess in there which is 10, centime 10 millimeters wide. Um, and that's for this part, the uh, for that to roll over inside, you know, which is the um, where the trigger catches on it. So we we could call this the sear if you wanted. Um, so uh, that sits in there like so, and when it rocks over, provided I got the profile quite uh, right, it should uh, raise it up a little bit. It'll release at that point. So when the crossbow is not cocked it'll be in that position like that and then you pull the string back and you push it against this part here and that will rock over and in turn this hook section will will raise up and uh, and catch the bowstring so you know there might be a little bit more finishing to be done in there take a little bit more wood away here and there but uh, that's generally uh, the way it's going to be. Now, I'm working on the exact position for the um, bow to be sitting. And when you look at the specs on um, practical mechanics, it suggests to put the bow for maximum power to put it all the way back there. Now, the thing is, that would give me, I think it's about, to put the bow at about 10 and a half inches from the release, and that's the actual spring of the bow, 10 and a half inches from the release. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, it would look okay like that, I agree. Um, the thing is, if you want that power, that's going to be giving you a power um, about 280 pounds pull. Now, if someone wants a 280 pound pull crossbow, that is going to be very hard to find anywhere to fire it, because everything you fire the crossbow at you're going to lose the bolt either by them disintegrating or them disappearing through several inanimate objects before they stop then that's fine but if you just want a crossbow which is good for whatever um, use on targets it's not going to um, be completely devastating um, you know, um, you know, if you just want something that's fairly reasonable to to fire, and is not going to um, destroy all sorts of things, you know, f hammer its way through an engine block, then um, I'm suspecting that we want to be going a little bit closer on this, and I'm suspecting more like about eight or eight and a half inches from the release is going to be suitable uh, but that is up to you um, I think that's going to still look fairly good at that distance it's still going to look like a like a fairly reasonable looking crossbow and um, that will still take a fair amount of uh, pull on that um, I'm going to be using one of these cocking levers to cock it because I cannot move that more than a centimeter or so by hand it just does not want to move uh, that's the sort of tensile strength or whatever you will call it, would want to call it which is stored inside that string also that string is a maximum uh, breaking strain of 
I think 180 pounds so I don't want to be continuously having to fork out for new strings or strings which are I don't want a string which is twice as thick as that um, I have seen them but uh, I'm just going to go for something which is sensible here uh, you know if I want to make a more powerful bow at a later date by all means I can go and do it I've got enough spring steel under my Jeep down there got plenty of it left over in those uh, Hillman um, Minx springs to make enough uh, crossbows to uh, I don't know whatever um, star revolution maybe um, yeah so it's going to look alright I think that uh, release is going to look good I'm going to darken the stock up when I come to doing that um, make it sort of possibly oak colour uh, I reckon it'll look cool um, yeah it's getting there right what I've done is I've just drawn this um, diagram out which I have transferred off the side of the crossbow I've worked out basically what I'm call I could call the release plate or the lock plate if you want to give it firearms t um, terminology so uh, that point there is where the release component is going to be uh, bolted into and that point there is where the trigger is going to be and then that point there at the front that little dot is just going to be where a screw is going to mount it down it might just be a screw in from each side or it might be some form of screw going right through the the plates I haven't decided exactly yet probably just go for some two small screws each side um, yeah so I've then drawn around them onto some 3mm thick steel plate and I'm just in the process of uh, sawing them out. When I say 3mm steel plate, it could be 2.5, it's, uh, it's just a bit of plate I found lying around and uh, I'm going to use I remember when I used to saw steel in in school, it used to take me forever to cut through uh, steel much thinner than this. But I suppose we were using pretty crummy old hacksaw blades and I just didn't have the strength when I was a kid that I have now. I use an 18 teeth per inch blade and I've lost a few teeth in the centre there, so that's why it's it's starting to snag a bit. I've drawn the two pieces close together which is to save waste on the metal but 
it will give me some, some slight issues about cutting the actual metal out but, um, on the two sides. So to resolve that, I might have to centre punch the, the metal and then drill holes and then possibly just break the two in half. You can probably see what I'm meaning. Uh, basically, I am going to have a hard time getting a full size hacksaw blade through. Now, I could use a junior hacksaw blade or I could use a jigsaw 